Brothers and sisters, let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always and forever acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> For our reflection today, words from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 31. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 31. And Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And Jesus came and took her by the hand. And lifted her up. I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The saga of the synagogue is now complete. And if you've been paying attention to last week's gospel, you would realize that Jesus finds himself in the synagogue teaching and a demon-possessed man shows up. And the demon-possessed man begins to cry out in the presence of God, what do you have to do with me? Have you come to destroy us? Jesus says, shut up. Not in the King James, <laughs> but probably in reality. And he does not permit him to speak. And the Bible says that he casts the demon out of that man and liberation and life came to him. Uh, Mark, in an immediate sense, moves on to the next scene. Remember now, Mark is trying to remind us and to prove to us and to argue the case for Christ. And he's helping us to understand that this is not an ordinary rabbi. This is not an ordinary person. This is not just a great teacher, not just a great healer, but this is God walking in flesh among us. Theologians today talk about the enfleshment of God. But this is God who is incarnate, the God that lives and breathes and heals and restores and gives life where there is death. This is the God for whom nothing is impossible. And so Jesus shows up to Simon and Andrew's house and his mother-in-law is sick. Simon's mother-in-law is sick and she is in bed. She is not doing well. The text says she has a fever. And the first thing that we realize from this specific text is that Jesus shows up. Let, let's stick a pin right there. It is often in times when we are at our most vulnerable state. It is when we are unhealthy helpful to those around us. It is when we are not able to give of our best that people don't want to show up for us. People tend not to show up when showing up does not benefit them. People tend not to show up when showing up will cause them to give of themselves more than they are willing to give. People will not show up when you cannot do what you used to do for them. If you don't know that by now, you just need, need to live a little bit longer and you will realize it. But why I love the text is because Jesus knows the condition of Peter's home. He knows the condition of this woman who is unwell. He knows the condition of her heart, the condition of her life, the condition of her body. And her body, her heart, her life, her circumstance does not scare Jesus away. In fact, it draws him and he shows up anyhow. It reminds us that we do not need to be perfect. It reminds us that we do not have to be in optimal condition. It reminds us that we can have nothing left to give. And in our most vulnerable moment, God is willing to show up. God is willing to show up in our lives. Show up in our relationships. 
Show up in our homes. Show up in our places of work and occupation. Show up in our weaknesses and in our struggles and in our, our dangerous uh, demeanors. God is willing to show up regardless of where we are, regardless of what we are facing, and regardless of what we are going through. The condition of our lives do not threaten God. Jesus comes anyhow. It is important to understand the medical condition of the time. When people were sick, there were so many contagious and infectious diseases that were present. There were so many things that could be caught and transmitted that when people were unwell, usually they were cast out of society. They were put out of their homes and out of the community. So Jesus risks himself by this visitation. Can I encourage us today that God is willing to visit us wherever we are. That God is willing to visit us regardless of the condition that we find ourselves in. That God is willing to meet us right where we are. Broken and battered and wounded and torn, discouraged and depressed. Whatever condition of our lives and our hearts and our minds, God is willing to come and to meet us there. And this is what Jesus does. The second thing that the text helps us to understand is that Jesus takes her by the hand. Now this is very important. Jesus touches her. If you follow the Gospels very carefully, you will notice in the miracles that Jesus never plays by the rules. In fact, when he meets a leper that he should not touch, he touches them. When he meets a deranged person that he should not speak to, he holds conversation with them. In other words, he never plays by the rules. Why? Because Jesus knows what we need and when we need it. What Jesus knew that in that moment was that she did not need a conversation. She did not need a word of encouragement, but rather she needed a touch. And this is what he does. He reaches out his hand, and the text says he takes her by the hand. Imagine that this woman was sick for probably days or weeks, and perhaps even months. And because of the dangers of sicknesses of that day, no one for a long time had held her hand, had touched her. She was seen as having a plague or some disease that was incurable. And Jesus shows up in the room, and before he says anything, he touches her. I can imagine the tears begin to run down her face. I can imagine that her demeanor changes. I can imagine the smile that breaks out across her, her face. I can imagine that she does not know what to do or where to go. She can't believe that in this moment of weakness and vulnerability, when she can do nothing and say nothing, God touches her. The challenge of our lives is that God wants to touch us right where we are. God wants to impact our lives right where we are. You see, the touch is not only a confirmation of God's presence. The touch is a disruption of her fear. It is a disruption of her anxiety. It is a disruption of disruption of her paralysis and her pain. It is a resetting of her reality and helping her to know that things are not as bad as they feel. Things are not as bad as they look. Things are not as bad as you think they are. Why? Because there is still hope. There is still life. There is still joy. There is still peace. There is still comfort. Even after this, the sun will shine again. You see, when Jesus touches her, he gives her hope again. When Jesus touches her, he gives her life again. When Jesus touches her, he gives her joy again. When Jesus touches her, he reminds her that she is not the untouchable. But that even in her state of weakness, 
God is still strong. And so it reminds us today that regardless of where we are, regardless of our ideologies and our political affiliations, regardless of what we think and what we say and what we believe, God is able to push through the mess of our lives and touch us anyhow. He's able to break through the darkness of what we are facing and the darkness of our depressed state and reach out and touch us anyhow. And his touch makes the difference. Back home, we used to sing an old hymn. It says, shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame, when the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that fills my soul. Something wonderful happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Broken bodies does not stop God from touching us. Broken minds does not stop God from touching us. Broken souls does not stop God from touching us. Wherever we are, whatever we face, God is able to touch. That's why he came from heaven to earth. That's why he reached down and looks beyond our faults and sees that we are in need of him. So Jesus, by this touch, communicates something significant to her, and it's simply this. While what you are facing is real, God is realer. I just made up that word for you. <laughs> God is realer than what you face. And the final part of the text says, and he lifted her up. Woo. And he lifted her up. When Jesus comes into our lives, when God comes into our lives, when we encounter the presence of God, here's the truth. We cannot remain the same. Now that begs the question whether or not some of us have encountered the presence of God. But the truth is, is that once we encounter the presence of God, once God touches our lives, there is a change, there is a sense of transformation that takes place. And what I love about God is that God never leaves something the way he met it. That's a, that's a point of praise right there. God never leaves something the way he met it. It meant that as God looked into the darkness and the abyss of the world, and he says, let there be light, things began to happen. Atoms became, be, began to come together, and the world began to take order and shape, and things that were out of place found their place. In Ezekiel chapter 37, in the valley of dry bones, as the prophetic word is issued over that valley of dry bones, every bone found its place, every sinew and measurement and blood tissue and vessel, everything came to life again because God's presence makes the difference. As Jesus laid in the tomb and as the power of the living God flows and blows over him, he revives, he is revived and lives again because God's presence makes the difference in our lives each and every day. Regardless of what we face and what we fight and what we go through as we live, God wants to lift us up. He wants to take us from where we are to a place that he has called us to be. And I love it because regardless of the fact that she is in this place, in this state of sickness, in this state of pain, in this state of discouragement, he lifts her up to help her to know this is not your final resting place. Allow me to encourage you today, where you are right now is not your final resting place. What you feel right now is not the last feeling of your life. What you are going through right now is not the final 
issue that you will have to go through. You will come out on the other side. And I'm not selling you dreams this morning. I'm reminding you of the God who shows up, of the God that touches, and of the God that is able to lift us up again, regardless of what we are facing and going through. And I believe that this was not just a physical lift. This was a psychological lift. This was a spiritual lift that Jesus reminded her that this is not the day you are going to die. Life can present us with so many circumstances and issues and challenges and struggles. It can cause us to reach a place of despair and hopelessness. We can feel like death is breathing on our backs. But the text reminds us today that God is there. Wherever you are, God is there. Whatever you face, God is there. Whatever you are fighting, God is there. Whatever you are struggling with, God is there. And this is not the end, but rather the beginning of great things to come. If you read the next verse, it says, and the fever left her, and she got up and served them. She realized that God had done something wonderful in her life. Her response was service to God. What is your response? In what ways are we responding? How are we saying yes to God? How are we grateful for all that God has done? How are we responding to the hand of God that has lifted us up? Jesus came, took her by the hand, and lifted her up. This same God holds your hand today. Allow God to lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen.